The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Thursday, the 14th. And finally, we're going to see uh, what happens. This is a key um, couple of sessions that we're looking at here because we did make an all-time high in a number of the charts. And uh, we're having some kind of a pullback. Does the pullback become a greater? Is there some kind of outside chance that there's a, either economic news or something that's going to happen to really turn this into a single leg, A to the upside? I don't know. So let's just run. Uh, we'll run in... Yeah, how can I do this? Yeah, let, let me just show you something here. So this is my um, this is my webinar coming up for this afternoon for subscribers. It's different to my overview that I give every week and on Friday. I try to do it on Friday, about an hour long. Last week was an hour and a half. There was so much to discuss. But it's sectors and stocks for the next market phase. Opening call subscribers webinar, Basil Chapman, Thursday, November the 14th, 2024. Uh, 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It will be archived. You can leave a number of people have uh, um, uh, emailed me to say, sorry, just uh, impossible to make it, but we're absolutely looking forward to it and we look to, for the uh, archive. So that's great. I um, mean, the whole thing about archiving is that you want to be able to go through some of the technical things and then you can stop the video you just stop and you read it. For instance, if I get to some of the technicals over here, uh, let me just go to, yeah, besides the chapter wave notation, we look at these different aspects, straight line ups, cup formation, arch formation, moving averages of various duration, chapter wave notation, counting peaks and troughs, price symmetry, chapter wave instant restart, and I just show the designs. It's just really simple, but every once in a while we get something a little more complicated. And that would be, um, remember, I'm always looking for the lowest low, count each higher high and successively uh, notate them alphabetically in sequence, uppercase on the way up, A, B, C, D, it goes to E, F, and G, but D is where other things can happen. On the way down, it's lowercase, uh, just things like that, or... If I want you to know a little bit about the MACD, I'll do this. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll just put it there and I'll stop it for a moment so you can take a picture of it. Or when you do the archive, you go through it if you aren't used to these terminologies. But this time, I really want to spend a lot of a lot of the 90 minutes. It can fly by. 90 minutes can go so quickly. And looking at... Just dozens and dozens of charts. Maybe I'll do the dozens, but when I come to it, I'll try to select a lot less. Don't want to overburden you with it. But there, there's a lot of stuff. For instance, yesterday on my in my newsletter, on the front page of the newsletter, uh, yesterday, let me see if I can get that here. Wednesday, was that Wednesday? Uh, right there. Yeah. So on the front page of my newsletter, for instance, right here in this upper paragraph right there, I said, uh, these are stocks that I'm looking at, and I still like them very much, and I, I named a few, and I had um, Disney. And I, I actually wanted to buy Disney yesterday, and I thought, no, we've got something else we wanted to we – were, we were, I, I needed to see that something was successful before I went on to the next thing. I preferred to do it that way. And look what happened. Yes, Disney. <laughs> Up. Nine points at 112, and what I was I what I was pointing to was this cup formation. In fact, when I was interviewed by Jacob yesterday, I even showed this chart. I said, "Look, here's Disney. Forget this bar right here. That wasn't there." But I had drawn in the cup formation with the with a plumb line, not to the exact low, but the plumb line to a point that I one of the candles or one of the 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 patterns that I look for to be able to draw the number of bars on the left that could match the number of bars to the right. And I said, that makes it this week where it should break and try to test the 104, I think it was, yeah, 104 level. And that we were, we were looking at it and it looked very positive. 
and that I was thinking that this would be one of those that I talk about today, that's uh, in the webinar, because we wanted to go long. Well, earnings came out, I don't know when they came out, but whatever it is, when I was looking at it last night, it was at 102, or it was actually down, or maybe up 15 cents or something like that. I thought, great, because this is breaking out of the cup, and a long handle in the um, daily chart, and that could be the beautiful cup formation in the weekly. Well, too late. But there are others. So we we uh, we have two positions today. One we just got. One we, is another one we've been looking at for a long, long time. Missed a, a much better entry earlier on, but we've had some really good positions. Some of our positions up 20, 30, 40, even 50 percent. Uh, one was up over 100 percent. Um, so I'm just trying to be as careful as possible. And I like to think of uh, when I do a webinar for new subscribers, for my subscribers, but of course, this is where you also get new subscribers. I always like to think of it as, all right, well, I'm coming in. I'm fresh. What do you've got for me? Uh, I don't care whether you've got a thousand percent gains. What are you doing for me right now? That's the way I have to look at it. It's like uh, when I was a, when I was a, a professional a clarinetist, performer, conductor, I uh, would always say, you know, that went well, but it's the next one that I've got to get even better. That's just the way it is. The audiences don't know that you did great yesterday. and They just want the next one to be pretty good. So this is now leg C in Disney. And, <laughs> and that is that is really the, the thing they've been waiting for. Look at that. Look what it's done to the chart, the horrible chart that went from 123.74 uh, back in April of this year down to 85. Not cut in half, but wow, 40-something percent decline. And look at this. Good spring back. But look at the monthly chart. Monthly chart looks terrible. 203 was the high back in 2021 for Disney. Now, just the only thing that stopped me yesterday from going uh, in the morning to, to put a position on for Disney was I was thinking to myself, you know, i, I got to think this through a little bit more because as I recall, Disney was kind of lambasted um, as being... Uh, very left, as if I remember correctly. And is this the time for them to suddenly be looking strong? So I can't, I can't, there's no excuse. I looked at the chart, the chart should have told me I should not have been overthinking it. And even then, this might be, it might be the case, but it was a beautiful move up from 101 to today's eye of 140. Bravo, good, good for Disney. Okay, next thing I'm looking at is, and I'm chuckling because I, I don't know if I even watch anything from Disney. All right, let's get back to our story. So the story now is something a little different. Uh, we've had this really strong move. I'm going to go back to these. So look, here's the Dow. Really powerful move from 41,647, up almost uh, 3,000 points to 44,486. You would expect some kind of a digestive phase, no matter how much more there is to go to the upside. However, I can't ignore the fact that um, the move was so quick that you don't really know at this point what kind of it's just got its breath just to recharge uh, is it store the Dow's now down what's this close to because if it takes out 43,600 uh, in the next day or two that could say, you know, it's just going to be a longer stalling period than, this, than you thought I don't see that right now I see buyers as being Pretty anxious to come in to buy. We'll see if that's the case. I'll be right back. Bye. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, we're back and we're looking at, um, so the Dow is down 44. Uh, the, the weekly chart, look, you had that huge spike up, it went a little higher. The 9 is over the 14, the price is way over the 9. The MACD is still good, it's got that M-shaped pattern. I usually the right side of the M is where you've got to be a little careful. And you've got the uh, unbalanced volume pulling back, it was overbought. And the stochastic's at 84%, that's really good. Monthly chart, we won't talk about monthly charts right now. we first got to get through the daily and weekly. Looking at the... Um, uh, looking at the S&P, just to do some technical analysis here, S&P at this point is trading down 14 at 5971, and I didn't type in, I should have, 6,000 right here, 6,000, 1731, I'm going to put that in, 6,000, 6017.31 was the high four sessions ago. That was the all-time high. And so far, that's all holding very nicely. Looking at the QQQ, didn't type that in. I'm going to do it right now. I typed in on the chart. Nope. Type it over there in the little rectangle. One, two, three. And there we are. So the QQQ is trading at uh, 510.06, down 219. 514.66 was the higher four sessions ago. Oh, 14.66. Okay, so yeah, we're down um, five points from there. It's not a big deal yet. And I've only got it as a leg C in the weekly chart, and that's still very strong. Now there's been another selling mode in the selling wave in the uh, um, general market. Dow's down 86, S&P's down 16, QQQ down 2.25, IWM. Watching this one really closely because it's been so superb on the way up, and now it's, it's really taking a digestive phase down a dollar at 234.07. Not a big deal, 
but it will be a big deal with three. This is the first time it's had three strong candles since the high of 224.95. Uh, that was the high back in September, and then it took a little while before it came back to the level to 227.17, and that was back in uh, mid-October. So I'm going to be watching this very closely all along uh, from the uh, 203 level, but we've also added a trading position. Now, also, the other thing that we've got to look at is the SMHs. The SMHs are the semiconductors holding quite steady here up 229 at 249.88. So I had a question in the den, if I could just find it, about Intel. Uh, was it more than just a look at Intel? It was uh, looking at, yeah, so you got that f uh, fidelity. Yeah, at, at 92, oh, I have that as well. Uh, actually, the trend has now dropped a little bit to 88. So we were close. But I, you had it high. You had the day range of 4.58. That's weird. I don't, I mean, hard, I've hardly ever seen the fours. It does happen. Oh, but you have to wait years for that. So something's a little bit weird. Okay, the question came in. I just got to look at Intel, INTC. Now, this is what I've been talking about all the time. This is going to be partly what my webinar is about. Within sectors... There have been stocks that have just soared to the upside and others have been left behind. Or the majority have been very weak and maybe one or two have been very strong. Well, look at this. NVDA, NVIDIA, which is probably the best of the best, is just stuck. It's up at $1.38 and $147.55, making a high level. It's really a cluster formation. If it keeps it up a little longer, then I'm looking for a quick drop to the 137 area, uh, 140 to 137. But in the meantime, everything's still positive. Uh, yes, in all the different seg segments, that's the daily, weekly, monthly. And now you've got Intel. Now, Intel's going to get all this money, <laughs> and I'm not sure whether they deserve it or not. It's not for me to say. I wish Dave White was around because he would know for sure. But um, they're the benefactors of not, not hundreds of millions, but actually billions, as I understand it, and they will put it to work. But um, is it enough for Intel to really start a bull phase, not in the daily, but in the weekly, because it'll only be a bull phase when it finally takes out this huge, ugly candle. Everything went wrong that week. The week of the 2nd of August, 31.47 was the high, opens at 31.42. Tiny little candles, like a Moroboza candle, except it does have little wicks at the end, but wow, it really has the Moroboza characteristic. And the low is tw the low is twenty point forty two, and it closes at twenty one point forty eight. So we have gotten into the halfway mark, and to me that's important. Uh, we, uh, the twenty seven thirty one area. We, we actually uh, yesterday's high was uh, twenty six eighty or something. No, no, not yesterday. It was a few days ago. It was 26.43. So, no, we haven't gotten to the 27s yet. If we get into the 27s in this phase right now, it says to me there's a chance that Intel, just as a counter trend move, very, very oversold. I don't know if they've got the capability. I don't know if they've got the goods. I don't know if anything other than it seems like they've got a ton of money and they really should, I mean, they should be able to put it to good use. So if it's able to get to the 27 and a half, let's make 27 and a half, it just needs to tag it once. In the next week, what's today? Today's Thursday. Anyway, between now and Tuesday or Wednesday, I would say that's a really good sign to say, as maybe an NVIDIA takes a breather, and does, if it does pull back, you could see Intel start to move up. So I think I'm answering your question by saying, the scales of justice, where you look at the one side, trying to balance the other side, there's nothing like it when NVIDIA is one of the lead stocks, and in just a short period of time, in a year, it's gone from basically the 60 level to 150. I, I just don't see how Intel can 
weigh the scales of justice. justice. It has to be a bunch of other stocks, but it can have a decent rally. And this last rally went to a peak B. It could be an alternate count. I think it has a B and it has a characteristic that says, I am going to try higher. It will completely fail if in November it's trading at 20, uh, 531. If in November, even one session, it closes underneath this low. Again, yeah, that's the low of the lowercase h that went to a lowercase m and then broke out to the upside, that makes this level of 2147. If there is a close under 21 any time in November, forget it. Intel, that's just a waste of money that they've got. But I would like to see them do something very good with that, and that should be representative well in the stock. Now, our next question came in. Uh, if I could look at the... Um, if I could look at... Oh, the energy, XLE. So the energy, it isn't just oil, remember? Energy, oh, no, did I lose that? Ah, my system shut down on Friday, was it? Friday, sometime, or Saturday. I had a most terrible time. And then instead of going back, I just continued when I finally got on Monday when Trade Station helped me get everything back again. I don't know, maybe it's worth it to be able to get all these charts back again. So XLE in the monthly chart is walking the nine period moving averages at 94.82. It's actually doing very nicely. So the A, B, C, D, E stalls, goes to an A, B, another A. Yeah, this could be, see, this actually, the energy is looking not bad at all. I'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com.
TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technicians Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi folks, I just wanted to show this now. Here's the XLE. So I have a rule of thumb that in the Chavway methodology, when you get to a peak C, if you don't have a peak C1, C2, like a double top, and you have to wait for the D, and it makes quite a bit of time, and there's like a cup formation, and it finally gets to D, I couldn't tell you how many times that D turns out to be an instant restart or a potential instant restart. In other words, within three bars, it's usually within two bars, this is in three bars, it goes from the peak D to a new leg E. And that E could, in fact, have an alternate count, um, E slash A. So this is fascinating because that's what the daily chart of the uh, XLE has done. And now it's in this leg E. I'm, as, it, as often you do this, you don't have to put it in, but in your mind, you have to think E slash A, B, uh, F slash B, C will be F slash C, etc. So this is this is so far very positive on the short term, the MACD, stochastic, everything's good for the. And you'd be surprised because all the talk has been for um, uh, at least oil prices to be coming down. But, uh, you know, sometimes talk and actions are some, some, two separate things, especially in the market. Um and that's a leg B, gray leg B in the weekly chart. Yeah, I actually look at this quite positively, much more so than I thought. Okay. So uh, I just mentioned once again, I think a few times I'll do that today because we are getting a lot of interest in it. Uh, let me go to this right here. And then I'm going to go to opening call. And I'm going to go to um, today, uh, tie newsletters. And I'm going to go click the opening call. So this is what I've got. Today at 4 o'clock, the opening call subscriber webinar, uh, Thursday, November the 14th, 4 to 5, 30 sectors and stocks for the next market phase. So we've already begun that. And in fact, today we did add to positions. One was something that, I mean, stock that we waited and waited and waited and waited for. I did have opportunity. We've Once before, we did try to get in, and we did have made a little bit, and then got out. But basically, we've just stepped aside. I should have got in earlier, but we had other positions uh, that we were in. I mean, here's a good example. You know, here's one. This is, where did it go? Uh, Genius Sports Company, Sports G E N I, right there. So this is Genius Sports Limited. It's a British company, data betting marketing. Uh, so we have had two positions. We took nice profits of one. And the other core position. Now we've made the other the core. The one we got in later at a lower price. A core position in the six fifties. And yeah, we are. Uh, it hit ten yesterday. It's trading at nine sixty six. So these these are positions that. So I I for subscribers I want to be in a variety of areas. I want to be. I I like to say under the radar, but to tell you the truth, sometimes under the radar means you're in the fog. I, it has to be specifically under the radar in areas like sports betting. Uh, I prefer this to DKNG, which is DraftKings. I just liked it as a better pattern. I think DraftKings now is starting to improve a lot. I don't know if it's be better, but certainly we've got the one that's least expensive in terms of what the cost is. Uh, not necessarily a cheap stock, but I, that's something else entirely, but a low price stock. I like to have that. I like to have that mix for subscribers where we can have something in the same area that's doing well, but much low price, which kind of follows. Maybe it doesn't do as well. For instance, we've had Bank of America for a long time. We've had it for every year for the last seven or eight years, and then we get out of it. We get into in the in the low 30s or 30 under 30, and then we get out on the way up. 
And then we're completely out as it comes back down. Then we wait and wait and get it back again. And I did that because I said, I think on a percentage basis, this has the opportunity to give us a much bigger bang for our buck than if we go into a JP Morgan or one of the leaders. So in that sense, I think we've been right so far. Uh, J, uh, Bank of America at 4606 uh, up 19 cents. A little stalling right here. I don't like that. And he's just another day or two. It really needs to get to the 47s. But it's done very well. But it's already gone to its second. Uh, this is its third leg D, peak D, actually. It'll be if there's no new high bar in just ever since March. Uh, it's been that kind of that kind of, um it's had that kind of rally and then a pullback, rallying pullback. So the target was 50.11, the all-time high, and we're still quite away from that. But that's the kind of thing we've been looking at. Um, for instance, the reason why we got into Bitcoin. I like Bitcoin. I liked it. I, I, I missed this whole move um, down the bottom where, where once before we had the GBTC and did fabulously. And then it just it came down. We just weren't interested. And I tried it once or twice and then said, no, it's not working. And then instead of just grabbing it in the 12s, it went to the 8s GBTC. I just watched this thing take off. And then I said, no, we've got to get it. So we got it just recently, and we've had a really good game. We've got the IBIT. And one of the reasons is, and that's what I'll explain tonight, how you can use these patterns. For instance, I, I looked at this and I said, this weekly chart is really the handle of the Bitcoin itself, futures. This is the cup, and there's the handle. Well, IBIT came out late. The iShares only came out fairly recently, back in, I think it was April of this year. So you're only getting the handle of this pattern. And if you don't time the handle correctly, <laughs> it's not very good. So we were very lucky. We were able to time it. Look, we've been in from there. I love this pattern, the Chapman Falling Axe Breakout pattern, and uh, done very nicely. Uh, and um, that's, that's really what I'm looking at in this particular phase. For instance, the stock that we just bought this morning, um, it's it's kind of a conglomerate of all the things that 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 this person the 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 uh, the director of the fund has had been buying all the way down and must have lost about eighty or eighty five percent of the of the of the of the original price and yet the conglomerate the the stocks that are within this kind of like think of it more like a fund. I'm, I like some of them very much. I don't know if I want to spread our portfolio out so much that I want to take some of them. And I, I just rather, in this case, treat it as another sector altogether. If I'm right, I don't know if I'm going to be right. But if I'm right, it means that we've got a sector that has some really cool, cool stocks that were innovators, but the timing was just terrible. And now the timing might be right. That's all I'm saying, and that's the way I'm looking at it. So it's a great opportunity to have get in as these uh, positions are trying their best to go to back to the cup formation or previous left side highs. That's all. Okay, within that, uh, um, I needed to do this. I wanted to go to the gold. So gold is down um, 13. Got back with the low of the day. Uh, this is where it should Remember the left side row we were looking at right over here back in, uh, I think it was September, August, September. Uh, it was September the 18th, low 25.72. Well, today we went all the way down to 20, uh, 25.49, was it? 25.41. And now it's up, wow, 30 points from there. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. 
Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors for traders who crave risk directions daily leverage and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade and trade through rapidly changing markets these are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading not long-term investing whether you're a bull or a bear you choose the direction for up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, uh, folks. So, um, let's see, in the den of uh, that's based, yeah, that's a different one altogether. ARQQ. Uh, can we look at QUBT? So, ARQQ, ARQQ is trading at this is fucking every quantum ink uh, is trading down two cents at 9.22 yes i've liked this for a while um it's one that i just i kind of i want i don't even remember i still have it on my watch list because uh, it did very nicely and then it did just terribly so i think i took it off just for, and now it's coming back again yeah it did very badly um so arqq is trading at yeah if it can go one penny above this high of eight of 920 oh, it's 976 976 from the 22nd of october and today's high today's high is 970 um that'll start a leg d but the technicals are strong enough to say yes it's a v-shaped formation it might pull back but it then has very good support of the 870s i'll follow this up in the next couple of days uh, another one that i was asked about is let me just have a look uh, Q U B T Q U B T. Okay, Q oh, I typed it into the den. Very good. Q U B T. I think we've actually just missed that one that I was talking about. Missed by a few cents. We'll still wait. If it comes back, that's fine. If it rallies, that's also fine. Rallies, that might be even better because it shows me it's got the veracity. Q U B T is up a dollar eighteen. Oh, it's only up forty four percent at three point eight three. Yes, this is one that was on my list. I haven't looked at it for ages. And let me just see what the wave count is. So there's your starting point right here. Let me see. I don't want to take too much time now because there's some things I wanted to discuss, questions that I had about, about the webinar. So let me see if I can do this. A, B, another A, B underneath. You remember, this is your starting point. So every peak gets counted in the chaff wave. So chaff wave is the waveform that never sleeps because every trough and every peak has its own implication. And you finally got to a D underneath there. So this is like a brand new A, 
B, C, D, is that an E? And that's an F. So this could be an alternate count. Just for now, I'm calling it an F. There's no reason why not to. And the weekly, weekly is A, A, B, C, D. And the weekly is in a D, A, A again, A, B, under it, C. If you've got those peaks, you've got to count them. C, and you've got yourself a D. So this is... It's done fantastic. Maybe it's, uh, there's no way that you can't say it's a little overbought. How do you know if it's overbought or not overbought? Just by the price. The price is it's, it's showing a lot of strength because it had follow through from yesterday's candle. So that's really good. So what I'm going to say is the support is at two between 397, uh, 297 and three, I'd, I'd put it at 347, 345. So that to me, any pullback over the next week, if it comes back into that area, it's going to take quite a while to get back. Whatever the news is, it's, it's very favorable to a quantum uh, computer, I believe it's called. And uh, But this is a good sign. This is the first sign that says, wow, those other big spikes to the upside, monthly spikes, pull back every single time. So watch this one closely. If there is a pullback going into November's close, it says, ah, it looks like a biotech. It's not, but it looks like a biotech because it keeps fading. Okay, I hope that helped you. Because if you like ARQQ and QBT and also like similar companies at different price points, LAES, yes, LAES. I saw that mentioned the other day, LAES. I don't know if I've done anything with it. No, I haven't. Yeah, this is another one that I followed only by name because it keeps coming up and I never remember what it is. Seal Square Corporation. Um, yeah, it, it has the same characteristic of news, 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 fabulous. Whoops, no news, down. News, 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 great. Whoops, no news, lower, lower. And that's the thing. So this bar right here, if by, not Friday, by Tuesday of this coming week, if this at 0.46 actually gets to point. 49, I'd prefer 0.51 with a close above 0.46. That would be the first sign to say we might have turned the corner and the tide instead of going down is slowly going to try to get back up again. All right, hope that helps you. Um, okay, okay, did that, did that, did that. Is this a new question? Yes, okay. <laughs> from another person who says, can't make it, but we'll do the archive. Another subscriber. But it doesn't matter. I, I, I love doing these things. It's like when I used to play concerts. I remember sometimes, you know, as a professional musician, you get asked to play a concert and you go somewhere out in the boondocks. You've never been. And you wonder, is there anybody here? I mean, what, who, what, what? And then I remember once my pianist said, you know, should we really, we just played it the other day. Should we practice the Brahms again? And I said, you never know who's there. And the reason why I say that is back when I lived in South Africa, um, I had a, a piano teacher, and she said that she once played, and she had studied with famous uh, uh, Fisher and all these famous uh, European uh, pianists. And uh, she, she said she went to this little farming place, and the piano was an upright piano instead of a grand piano. And she said, oh, and she, but she was thorough, and she just did the very best she could. And then after the concert, someone came up to her, and, and there were people that, of course, applauded in the wrong place. In the, you know, in jazz, you applaud whenever you're happy about something. In classical music, the form used to be that way, but then it changed to a formal applause when the, when the piece was finished. And then she said, someone came up to me and she said, oh, I'm so thrilled that you played that piece. I had studied it with, and she named this famous musician who my piano teacher had studied with. And yeah, she's, she, she was a farmer's wife. I mean, it sounds like Mozart's sister, right? Nanel. Mozart, her, his sister was actually a much greater pianist than he was. When they were seven and nine years old, she was the older one. And she would leave the concerts. In fact, she was a great composer. And she, uh, he made all the fame. And then she went to a little town, um, uh, kind of a, not a mining town, little town. And um, uh, she, only after he died, did she come, she, she come back into her own and, and went back to playing. But she was a fantastic musician. You never know who's out there. So uh, the point is that you've got to 
just do your best all the time. So with that said, uh, let's go. Let's go back to um, yeah. So the question, other questions that I had. So the question came up about the VIX index. So the VIX index is trading down at a lower low. So it's in the area of the 13s. If you look at this chart that I, I made a big deal about, I've made it for the last, oh, I don't know how long, that this horizontal line has been in place for a great deal of time. And that the volatility index has very often over the years, back in 2012, back in 2013, uh, back in 14, where it had a huge spike up to the 31s. It's gone back to this purple horizontal line. And here it is once again. It's from this line that you get those sudden moves to the upside. When will that happen? I have a plan. I'll start discussing it tonight, and then I'll bring it in. I'll introduce it tomorrow formally. And it's the thinking of what the market seems to be telling me as a possibility for the next number of weeks going to end of the end of the year. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So for the webinar coming up in about uh, five hours' time, um, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be looking at a lot of things. I'm trying to. I'm going to try to assess what a rider, supply chain, transportation, fleet management solutions, at an all-time high, as we speak, what what are the implications? What are the implications? You know, I look at these five, six, seven stocks all the time, all the years. Syntas 
Is that a peak A or is that a final peak E up at there making an all time high in the 227 uh, area? Uh, trading right now 220 down 351 leg E in the weekly. What, what, are the, what are the implications here? What about waste management? Waste management, I mean, if the economy is really doing well, I've always found waste management is right there. So it goes to a peak C and pulling back a little bit, an all time high. All of these are close to all times high. Uri, this is the. Um, this is the rental place, United Rentals. I mean, really, how can these be making all-time highs um, if, in fact, we're about to tank? So I'm looking at this, and I think the rotation is the most important thing, and that's what I'll talk about tonight, trying to identify what's working and what's not. You don't have to worry about what's not working if you are fortunate enough to be able to pick what is giving you the upside action. And it's really important to me to see the XLF holding so beautifully up 14 cents at 49.91, the S&P Select Financials, and the KRE finally following, doing quite nicely at 66.42, um, at a recovery high, a yearly recovery high, above the 65.32 high that was made back in 2023. Uh, and that to me is important, and that's what I'll be discussing. And what are we looking at? What I've got a whole list of low price stocks. I'm going to try to sort them out and say what fits the current environment. So you don't have to pay a lot, but you can get something under under ten dollars, and it might serve the purpose. This, that's that category plus the category that says no. You've got to also be in what's really working regardless of price. So that's the webinar coming up tonight. Um, hope you can join me. Check out the front page of TFN. Subscribers and new subscribers get a 30-day guarantee.